Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, Man BK here. We got another video for you. Uh, this one is going to be in about a so uh, Souls-like game coming out, words, uh, called Lords of the Fallen. We recently did a video kind of covering why I think you should be paying attention to this, especially if you are a Souls fan. And um, as it would have an IGN is doing an IGN first on this. So we are going to pull up their most recent article, actually, that's covering the classes. So sit back, relax. And let's do this. All right. So if you hear anything crazy in the background, y'all, it's just Ladybug and Cat Noir. So don't worry about that. Big Netflix movie. My daughter's watching it. It's a lot of fun. It's based in Paris. But that's not what we're here for, right? We are here to cover Lords of the Fallen, a breakdown of every starting class. I think this is pretty cool. There are a lot of really interesting things here um, and a lot of stuff a lot of people are going to uh, already know coming out the gates if you are a Souls fan. But the first one is called a Black Feather Ranger. Um, and you can kind of see the starting outfit here, which I actually think is really sleek. It says it's a ranged archetype with two types of arrows at their disposal. While no slouch in melee range, oh, excuse me, while no slouch in melee range, the Black Feather's best strategy is to begin. Sorry, I was reading the text message, y'all. The uh, best strategy is to begin combat from afar, aiming manually and landing headshots for critical damage. If the Ranger goes into a close range scrap, uh, once the enemy disengages, they can let loose with specialized arrows to trigger debuffs or elemental damage before getting back in and finishing them off with their axe. So for this, it says their starting gear is an axe, a bow, oak arrows, poison arrows, light shield, and medium armor. This, it even it even kind of break down your stats to focus here, which I thought was, uh, uh, I mean, this is just a well-done article, um, which is agility is going to be the primary stat. It's going to synergize with the bow damage uh, as well as leaning more towards agility-based weapons. It's going to be the most efficient strategy stat-wise. Raising, um, you're going to be scale into elemental magic as the arrows have elemental types, so that's pretty cool. Raising vitality for extra HP is always a fine idea, especially early game. And the notes from the developers on this is picking up targets from afar on the move, land headshots, and this type of melee-focused game will always be satisfying, especially landing critical bows, hits on the bosses, hitting their weak points, which are otherwise unreachable most of the time by melee. Aside from this, playing a cunning woodsman from the frozen waste feels like an apex predator on the prowl. So... Sounds really cool. Sounds obviously like s sort of a ranged based class focusing solely on solid uh, aiming abilities, hitting those crits, and then moving in with those really high agility weapons. So that's pretty cool. This guy right here, y'all, this guy just looks amazing. Like I almost just want to start with this class because of the way you look. It's called the Condemned. This massa, 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 oh, all right, y'all. Okay, you're here. You're here at my channel. You know I don't edit this stuff. So we're going to we're going to skip that word. I know it's an easy one, but for some reason, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time saying it. This class is for pain gluttons. The condemned is a wretched prisoner who has suffered indiscriminate torment. Flimsy and feeble, they make for a very poor starting class. They use their waste buckets from their cells as a melee weapon. They can throw rocks at their enemies, but that won't achieve much except annoyance. As pitiful as it sounds, they are fast on their feet and can make a reasonable progress. I'll bet paid in blood. OK, that just sounds. This almost sounds like, uh, you know, like the the character in Elden Ring. What is it? Like that's a nobody character that you just kind of come in with your underwear. Uh, so your starting gear is a broken bucket fist weapon, throwing rocks and light armor. So you're going to be focusing here on uh, if they have the lowest stats in the game, which makes them quite the dark horse when it comes to builds. But they can absolutely... They can build absolutely anything early since level ups will come quickly and they won't have points invested in stats they don't need. So this is an expert class to be sure. So this is going to be that like coming in super fresh, do whatever you want class. And the developer here says that no uh, question that they have the most iconic look and they are perfect for experts that are keen on optimizing their builds. If the idea of starting with the worst class and thriving with it for bragging rights sounds appealing, then the condemned is the class for you. That's pretty cool. Um, but the number one reason to play this class is the two-handed sprint heavy attack, the dive kick. So dive kicking people off ledges puts the fall in the Lords of the Fallen. Very well-written little quips here. Uh, our next one is Dark Crusader. So this, I guess, is going to be tied to the Deluxe Edition class. So you're only going to get this if you buy the Deluxe Edition. Keep that in mind. Uh, that's the editor's note here, too. The Dark Crusader is 
only a starting class in the deluxe edition. So, but this is going to be a powerful melee class with radiant powers and a long sword capable of massive sweeps and deadly vertical strikes. The Dark Crusader is indom- indomitable in melee, even more so than the Hallowed Knight. What it lacks in the range department and more than makes up for it with excellent physical protection. Your starting gear is going to be the Great Sword, Heavy Armor, and Rosary Catalyst. So this is going to be a heavy strength melee build. Um, and looks like Radiance to cast more advanced pr- protective spells, which I'm guessing is what the Rosary Catalyst is for, right? So you can already, again, see all these similarities tied to the Dark Soul series. The notes from the developer is the Crusader is our poster boy. He looks absolutely metal and is by far the most lore-appropriate character to crusade and right the wrongs in Mornstead. That's probably why it was also a deluxe edition character, right? Loaded up in really sick gear. Make you want to buy it. Uh, the next one is the Exiled Stalker. This looks like already like a rogue-like character. Um, Exiled Stalker is an advanced class that fits the mold of cunning and stylish rogue. Uh, so this is going to be getting in, getting chain hits, disengaging in a flash to re-engage a half second later. So you're coming in, you're coming out. A lot of precision here and execution and mastery of the terrain. Your starting gear are two daggers, medium stalker armor, throwing daggers, and poison salts. And uh, here you're going to obviously probably focus on agility and endurance to boost stamina and dagger damage. So you can do that get in and get out. This class does not do a lot of posture damage, which means if not careful, they'll end up trading hits with enemies. Increasing HP at the early levels is never a bad idea. Obviously, if you're trading hits with enemies and you miss probably a dodge or getting in and getting out and moving with that fluidity, you're probably going to die pretty fast. Um, and the notes from the developer here are the medieval, the medieval assassin's cutthroat trope is obviously incredibly important. The stalker is a stylish daredevil that appeals to many since it's the epitome of confidence and martial art, uh, artistry, a deadly uh, dervish of death with poison blades. That being said, it's a very demanding class and it's lengthy combos can land the players in hot water. So I can kind of understand how they're getting in and getting out. So this is a class where if you want to deal a lot of damage, you're going to need to land those combos, but also know when to probably uh, cancel out and get away. The next class is the Hallowed Knight. Also another, some of the designs in this, y'all, the starting gear just looks really good. Um, And this is all in Unreal 5, so... The Hallowed Knight is a classic sword and board archetype. So, okay, so you got your classic sword and shield guy. Um, short sword, uh, knight shield, heavy armor, grenades. That's pretty cool. Healing over time consumable. So you're going to come in and focus vitality, endurance, obviously endurance, so you can have the heavy armor um, and stamina. And then you can either go into agility to use halberds or spirits and or to cast radiant spells. So you could be almost like a, a radiant knight. This is an all-arounder jack-of-all-trades. Great defense, fast attacks, popular weapon, and tossing grenades is always good fun. The most popular archetype, the knight. So I can see a lot of people playing this. Um, kind of opens you up to come in with the fun sh- sword shield guys with the ability to throw grenades, which is obviously uh, probably going to be a lot of fun and limited, I imagine. You probably get, like, what, two or three? Um, and then th- with the ability to spec into, like, radiant spells and be that like that radiant crusader, which could be cool. Morning said infantry. Already you're coming right in with the spear, uh, spear shield guy. Makes sense. Extremely long melee range with a focus on defense and javelin tossing. Quick on their feet. All right. So you have a spear, a light shield, heavy armor, throwing javelins, and healing over time consumable. The stats to focus on here are despite the heavy armor, uh, the weapon and shield are very light alongside the condemned. The Mornstead infantry is free to specialize in anything, okay? Either continuing pumping agility to get more damage out of the spear or raising strength to pick up early halberds. And the the, uh, hub is a great idea. Magic can also be easily embraced. That's kind of cool. So the developer says the class is is the infantry soldier archetype. Spear on the shoulder. A uh, small shield poking at enemies from afar. The common type of medieval warrior that conquered the lands. Cool. Um, ordained Preacher. All right, so this is probably going to come in and be sort of like that healing buff class, right? You can already kind of tell. A preacher is probably going to be specced right into the Radiance. It says uh, it's the Evangelist of the Orient Church, bestowing the wisdom of Oris. One hammer blow at a time. Yeah, you got a cool looking hammer here, actually. Uh, This is meant to be an advanced class for experienced players. It's going to lack in physical protection, uh, but it more than makes up with that with the hat. They love this hat. They're going to, this is a tremendous hat. This is why you picked this class, y'all. The hammer is weighty and impactful, breaking the will. So you got a hammer to break the posture and the starting healing spell grants the preacher on peril. It's sustained. So, right. 
This is a Radiance guy. So you get a Hammer, Life Shield, Radiant Catalyst, Healing Radiance Spell, Light Armor, and a small Mana Stone Consumable. Get that Mana back to use that Healing Spell quite a bit. Stats to focus here are going to be Radiance, it looks like. Obviously, I'm guessing Radiance must be tied to the actual spell system. So perhaps Radiance is what the spells are in Lords of the Fallen. Not only will it boost the damage of Radiant Spells, but also increases mana. And then you're going to go into Vitality and Strength, probably depending on whether or not you want HP or you're going to start rocking a uh, melee weapon. And uh, the Radiant Spells are less about destructive power and more towards buffs and support. All right. That's pretty cool. You can branch into a full-blown range spellcaster here, though, or a paladin archetype. The notes from the developer, given how religion permeates all aspects from the game, the preacher feels like the most lore-appropriate class, bringing justice to the heretics, redeeming the sentinels, and smiting the demonic back from whence they came. Cool. Partisan. Oh, whoa. Partisan. Part partisan or partisan, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Crossbow, also distance and up close. A variant of the Hallowed Knight. This is the Morningstead Knight Champion. His starting weapon of Flail is more specialized. It comes with a crossbow, giving him a powerful single-target ranged option. So your gear here is a Flail, a Knight Shield, crossbow. This is heavy armor and unripe barriers for stamina regen. Uh, your focus here is already good at defense, so you're going to go into agility to get more out of the Flail and endurance to keep the momentum of swings. That makes sense. Early investment into vitality is useful. Early investment into Vitality is useful in any of these games, y'all. I mean, let's be real. Uh, the notes from the developer here are clad in chainmail, swinging flails, and shooting crossbows. Uh, you're a skirmisher, perfectly balanced. Okay. Reflects the fantasy of an effective duelist for all situations. Nice. Pyric Cultist. Ooh. Ooh, this is... This might be my favorite. This guy feels like maybe like a, a mage, right? You're, this is an advanced class, worshiper of a deer who's sworn to see the national remains one true god finally restored. A mage wielding pyromatic spells. Oh, yes. That engages enemies from afar with a very effective fire projectile. Confirmed. I'm starting with this class. They also make good use of a heavy pole arm, which that's really cool. The staff is particularly effective against groups of enemies while his initial fire magic is strong for single target or close groups. This may seem exceptionally strong, but take heed. The early areas features Rogar enemies and fire spells are not particularly effective against them. That's cool. It's kind of cool. You're going to start off with maybe the ability to further in the game really hit, but at the start, you're going you're gonna to have to like manage using those spells. Your stats here are going to be Infernal. It's going to be their most important stat. It's going to boost spell damage as well as mana. Okay, so I wonder if the two spells then are Radiance and Infernal. So you're either debuffing I mean, and buffing and healing, or you are Infernal, like, you know, even like in terms of lore, pulling from hell, and it's like fire, right? Um, so then they say to go into Endurance here for stamina, and you can branch out to Strength to start willing heavy, like, Rogar weapons. Developers here say with their masks made from human skin. Oh, wow. Yikes. Uh, these pyromancers are the anti-preacher. Humans, cultists yearning for a deer's return. Okay. Aside from being agents of chaos and destruction, they also revel in bloodletting, collecting hands and using them as catalysts. It's a very Lords of the Fallen kind of class since embracing their unfettered power. Wow. Okay, y'all. That sounds cool. Or... Or Udu, ooh, wow. Werewolf, essentially. Maybe like a ranger werewolf is what that's trying to say. I love the look. That looks great. This is an all-out offensive class focusing on overpowering. Oh, so this is like your great will. Yeah, your, your big sword, right? Your long sword guy. Focusing on overpowering melee and that can stagger. So high staggers. Um, and you can set your weapon fire using fire salts and swinging it around like a maniac. So you get the long sword, a throwing axe, medium armor, and fire salts. So you're going to go right into strength. This is definitely a strength built guy. The barbarian archetype, fur clad berserker, no shield, all in, devastating white, sweeping attacks, and really handy axe throws. What class will you be? Probably the pirate cultist what a really cool breakdown from ign um all, i think all these classes look really exciting sound off in the comments on what you might play as and if you enjoyed this video make sure you like and subscribe and uh check out what else we have going on here on the channel um i hope you all have a wonderful weekend and thanks for sticking around until next time